Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our epistle lesson, and I read Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Here is the reading of our text. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Faith is so important, right? It may seem odd for me to say this, but everybody has faith. Maybe not saving faith, but they have faith. They have faith, for example, that when they drive through a green light, all those cars, with nothing stopping them, will not run through that red light and ram into your side. Sometimes that faith is disappointed, isn't it? Sometimes... They go through that red light, and you're surprised because they do run into you or somebody else. A young girl may have faith in her boyfriend until that tragic day she sees him kissing some other horrible girl at school. Some people have faith in the state, right? The state's going to bail us out. The state will give me my Social Security, or the state is going to do something else wonderful make me get a, help me get a mortgage payment or something like that. And that's all well and good until the state collapses. You know what? The government dole stopped the day the Roman Empire stopped giving it out. You know, just ceased to exist. Or science. I believe in science. Science is the answer to everything under the sun. Until you get that illness that science just can't come up with a cure for, like old age. And all of a sudden, your faith in science begins to teeter a little bit. We all live by faith. And I'm not just talking about religious people, although religious people have faith too, don't they? I mean, do Muslims have faith? Sure. They believe in that idol they call Allah. Allah. Do Hindus have faith? Do Buddhists have faith? Did the ancient Romans who talked about Zeus and all those guys have faith? Sure. Everybody has faith. But as we go through these examples of faith that people have, something becomes abundantly clear. The value of faith is not in faith. The value of faith is determined by what you have faith in. Let me give you an example. You have been washed over board on a ship. And two people are going to throw you something. One person is going to throw you a ring. And it floats. And it's got a rope on it. And the rope goes back to the ship. And the other person is going to throw you another white ring. Only trouble is that that thing's made out of lead. <laughs> now, you may have faith in the lead ring, but what's going to happen if you hold on to that? You're going to go down. But if you have faith in the ring that floats, that has the rope to it, so the person can pull you back to the ship, then your faith is well founded. Faith does not determine how effective those life rings are. What they're attached to, what, what you have faith in is the important issue there. Not your faith, but what you have faith in. And when we read this great catalog of saints in the Old Testament, I mean, that uh, the writer of Hebrews list from the Old Testament, the question is not, did they have faith? Everybody has faith. The question becomes, what did they have faith in? When Jesus talks about our Heavenly Father is going to provide for these things that we need like he does in our gospel lesson today, he is not talking about a faith on my own self-reliance. 
I'm going to get out there and I'm going to plow the crop and I'm going to water them and I'm going to weed them and I'm going to harvest them and it's me, me, me and I'm doing all of this. Longest drought in history that I know of anyway going on in Africa right now. And you can plow and you can try to weed and you can do all that good stuff and you know what kind of crops you're going to get? Zero. You could do all the same thing that your farmers in Iowa do and get no results. Faith and self-reliance isn't what Jesus is talking about when he says, uh, consider the lilies of the field. Faith in, instead, the God who created heavens and the earth, who redeems us, who sanctifies us, who one day will bring us to heaven. That's who we are going to have faith in. This is a faith that is captured in the Nicene Creed that we just confessed. Those are the things that are hoped for and the things in which the believers of old were convinced of. They found that. Notice, isn't this wonderful, the Old Testament lesson today from Genesis 15? Do you know that that is the first time in the Bible that the word believe is mentioned? You have Adam and Eve, but it never says, and they believe. You have Noah, but it never says, and they believe. You have Enoch, but it never says, and he believed. Not until you get to Abraham and to this promise do we finally get, and he believed. But notice it wasn't just he believed and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. It was, and he believed the Lord. The Lord. And it was reckoned to him as righteousness. This is what a biblical faith is. It's not just some general faith. It's not just the faith that everything's going to work out. You believe in the Lord, the God of the Nicene Creed. That's the biblical faith. You believe in a father who sends a son and a father and a son from whom the spirit proceeds. We don't trust in man. Scripture is very clear about that. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. The arm of flesh will fail. That includes government. David himself. Now David's a king, right? You'd think he would, he would su support trusting the government. The government's the answer to everything, right? David says, do not uh, put not your trust in princes and a son of man in whom there is no salvation. Government's not the thing that we put our faith in. We don't put it in luck. Does Jesus in our gospel lesson today out of Luke 11 sound like he's saying if you're lucky you will get the things you need no he says and your father who knows you need these things will provide them we don't believe in some cultural Jesus like like a, a little dashboard Jesus up there guiding us keeping us safe when I was in China a number of years ago now uh, I found out that the taxi drivers had, uh, many of them put a little Mao, plastic Mao on their dashboard. And the idea is that Mao is going to keep them safe. And you know what? If you're driving a taxi in Beijing, you need something to keep you safe. <laughs> but, but a lot of people will have a little plastic Jesus, like a good luck charm. That's not what we're talking about. Okay? We're not talking about a Jesus who only loves Americans. We're not talking about a Jesus who doesn't really care how you live, who has no opinions, who just says, oh, I love you, you know, baby doll. It doesn't matter what you do, or what you think, where you go. None of that matters because, golly gosh, I'm just so warm and fuzzy. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a Christian faith, which is a faith in Christ, whom, and because we believe in Christ, we have faith in the Father, and we have faith in the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. We have faith, a biblical faith is a faith 
that is found in the Nicene Creed. Today, or as far as that goes, any Sunday, really, we don't have enough time to cover the Trinity, the Triune God, the, the God that we believe in. It's just too big a thing. But Luther, in his small catechism, explains the Apostles' Creed, and his explanations work very nicely also for the Nicene Creed. And if you want to, you can find that explanation not only in any small catechism that you have in your house, but also on page 322 of your hymnal. And because that explanation works so nicely, we're just going to review that uh, as our way of reminding us of what our biblical faith is. Our biblical faith is, our Lutheran faith, our Christian faith, is that we believe that God has made us and all creatures, kind of like our Sunday school class this morning, right? Uh, that he has given us our bodies and souls, eyes, ears, and all our members, our reason and all our senses, and still takes care of them. He hasn't just wound us up like an alarm clock and set us on the dresser and walked away. Still takes care of them. He also gives us our clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, husbands, wives, and children, land, animals, and all that we have. The gospel lesson for today, right? He richly and daily provides us with all that we need to support our bodies and lives. He defends us against all and guards us and protects us from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in us, for all this is our duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. The first hymn that we sang, right? By grace I'm saved, grace free and boundless. We don't earn God's love. We also believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, is also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, and is our Lord who has redeemed us, lost and condemned people, purchased and won us from all sin, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that we might be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Notice that's what I was saying earlier. He doesn't say everything's cool. He forgives, but he says, go and sin no more. Righteousness, innocence, blessedness. Just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. It's as sure as his resurrection. And we also believe that we cannot by our own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ our Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called us by the gospel, enlightened us with his gifts, sanctifies and keeps us in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. Remember, he's not just God of Americans. He's not just God of Missouri Center Lutherans. The whole Christian church on earth. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all our sins and the sins of all believers. Talking about confession and absolution, like we did earlier. Talking about the Lord's Supper, which we will be sharing later. Talking about the waters of baptism, which is not happening today, but it is somewhere, I'm sure, because it's the whole Christian church on earth. Keeps us in the one true Christian faith. What is that one true Christian faith? that Nicene Creed, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. On the last day, he will raise us and all the dead and give eternal life to us and to all believers in Christ. Not just all believers, but all believers in Christ. This is the Christian faith. So Luther says quite clearly, this is most certainly true. In fact, he says it after we pointed those paragraphs. This is most certainly true. It is the Christian faith. It is the biblical faith. It is the faith that we have been baptized in. It is the faith that we confess 
week after week after week. It is our faith. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.